Hey boys and girls, Doug Childs here. It's Warriors and Wildman, the Rich Whitmer Less Edition. Rich is playing hooky. I think he's uh, getting prepped to go to Indonesia. I don't know if it's diving or ministry or a combination of both, but I'm here today and uh, you guys know that uh, every time that I show up, I'm a, I'm a barrel of monkeys. Hey, speaking about a barrel of monkeys, if you want to laugh your backside off at the little tinker pot popping jays that proliferate the effete and oh so sassy evangelical milieu, get my book Lionhearted, Making uh, Christian Males, Rowdy Biblical Men. And also, if you're pig sick of what's going on in this world, especially in, inside the United States of liberal acrimony, boom, Psalms of War, prayers that literally kick ass and if you want to read both of those books and do it over an incredible cigar, the Safari Cigar line is second to none. Go to safaricigar.com, use promo code SAFARI20, and bam, like the stick, let the blue smoke rise, relax, study the Word of God, talk to your buddies, and get ready to go into Armageddon because we're heading towards Thunderdome, folks, and you need to be prepared. Speaking about being prepared... Our next guest, uh, Alban Sadar, Sadar. Boom! Got it! I don't know. I think you're a Muslim or something. You could be, you know, this sneaking up on us, Alban, and you're going to garrot me one of these days when we're in New York or doing an event together or something like that. Yeah. But I don't, I, I have a problem, and I know I'm, I'm botching your introduction right now. I have a problem with the English language because, you know, man, I went to public school in West Texas and, uh, yeah, started smoking dope when I was 12. So kind of missed a few things, Alpin. So Sadar. How can, how can I, Sadar. Yeah, sa Sadar okay. like, like radar. Now, All right. I was explaining off Woo! there. I've, I've got an identical twin brother named Anthony, and he goes by Sadar Radar. See how simple it is to remember that? Um, yeah, and, and, I was, and you know what? And you know what? You just told me like five minutes ago, and I still botched it in your introduction. So for uh, the... for. Yeah, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I was looking around my, my extensive library here because I have several of your books and I was going to be holding them up, you know, because I knew you'd hold up your own book. And of course, I'm going to hold up my book at some point called Obvious. But <laughs> but um, I couldn't, I think my wife took them because we, we read things, you know, Christian books in particular, and we pass them around, et cetera, et cetera. So I think it must be up somewhere in the bedroom or so by the bedside table or something. Yeah, but. as long as it's uh, you know not being used as a coaster or was tossed out no. the rubbish. You know? Oh, no, your um, last book, I was reading stuff off of it to my wife and we we're just laughing. You've got such a funny way of writing. So, Well, we, thank you, brother. And for yeah. the uninitiated warrior and wild men listener, uh, Albin, uh, are you still working with Eric or? No, I, I was his producer for like five okay. and a half yeah. years. Yeah. And then I was working like the Dickens on my new book, Obvious, seeing the evil that's in plain yep. sight and doing something about it. It was like it was almost like serving two masters. I had to get off the train, the Eric Metaxic train and get on the on the, the election train because there's so much going on that I said, I got to go around, promote this book, promote what what's obvious, what's going on, what happened in the 2020 election what's going to happen in the 2024 election unless we, the yeah. church, wake up and conservatives in general, and we, we, you know, we do something about it. And so I talk about how to do something about it. I talk about what I've done in the past and um, it, it's an important book right now. And so I'm out there promoting it and I'm, I'm I think I'm doing a pretty good job. <laughs> yeah, man. I'm, I'm, you know, I was looking at it the other day and doing well on Amazon and it's been out you, what's the third week of September, something like that. Still up there kicking ass. So for the uninitiated Warrior and Wildman listener, uh, the book is obvious and uh, seeing the evil that's in plain sight. And boy, that's the understatement of the year. Yeah. And, and, uh, I, and doing wanted, something about it, you know, imagine that. To, well, one thing I want to mention, one of the fun facts about it, your blurb for the book is actually on the back of the book. And I had written to half a dozen or so people to get a blurb and you were the first one to send one in and, and it just nailed it. And it was so much fun. And they truncated is a bigger blurb inside the book, but they truncated it for the back of the book. And I'm so pleased, uh, Doug, that you who know this stuff inside and out, you said, yeah, man, that that's it. Obvious is is a great book. And I, I thank you for that right off the bat. Yeah, it's a compendium. I mean, uh, it, one of the things I love about it is that it's there's tons of different topics. And uh, I think it's also, um, it shows, you know, the Christian in particular, 
uh, how to, you know, take their Christianity album and, and move it into these spheres of thought and Christian worldviews and public policy and education, and the arts, and frickin' take the, the, the Marxist, evil, radical peons to task and, uh, and do it with a lot of fun. And, uh, and then, you know, hammer them with facts. So I think it's a great, you know, again, it's, it's, it's a great primer. Like if, if there's young people, we got a lot of young people that follow us here in Warriors and Wild Men. And uh, they like the kind of Christianity that Rich and I uh, parlay here on our podcast. And uh, I, want, I, want to get, I want to get the young people in particular. And uh, I want to get them um, maldy in a righteous sense, not self-righteous but defending truth and going into these spheres and these topics and, you know, these various things that, that you uh, tackle and obvious and uh, have fun doing it. Because, uh, man, if we're, if we're going to sit here on the sidelines of life and pick Len out of our navel, you know, and twiddle our thumbs and spend 50 hours a week on porn sites and infinite scrolling on social media, then uh, guess what? I hope you like. Uh, I hope you can speak Mandarin because we're going to be speaking Chinese if the church doesn't come to scratch. And that's what I like about. First of all, you you do it. You've done it for a long time, and that's why you know we dig bringing you on to the Warriors and Wild Men and introducing uh, them to or you to our audience. Yeah. But also, uh, you know, you exhort the people to get busy because if not, and you've got an article here at Stream right now. If not, you're aiding and abetting the enemy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, because, you know, we've, like you said, we have got to get busy. I, I run down four categories of Christian in my book, and one of them, one of the categories is self-persecuting Christians. And I say that because there are Christians are sitting on the sidelines, they're saying like, I don't want to get involved in politics, I just want to preach the gospel, I don't want to get involved, okay? And then one of these days, they're going to find the po politicians are kind of cramping down on them, and they're going to say like, oh, I'm being persecuted, I'm being persecuted. You're self-persecuting. You had a chance to take a stand, take a stand against all this evil that's happening right now. And, and if you don't know that you're supposed to get involved, think about this. Did Paul take a stand against the po political evils in his day? And some of the political stuff is in the church itself. The church hasn't woken up and people are saying like, well, I don't want to get involved in what's going on in my church because that's like the politics of the church. And I don't want to, you know, did Jesus overthrow the, 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 the tables? Did he get a little bit miffed or tiffed whenever the thing needed something like, you know, an in your face response? We can't sit back. And I, I'll tell you something. I have some fun, funny stuff in the book. I have cartoons. I have funny little made up parables and things like that because I'm I'm preaching, I'm I'm trying to talk about people saying, you know what, I want to speak the truth in love. So I'm trying to put in like a nice little when Jesus spoke to the ordinary people, he said, Have you considered the lilies of the field? Have you thought about this? And he didn't say, like, look at the lilies of the field. What's wrong with you people? Look how they're clothed. <laughs> look at the birds of the air. No, he said, just consider it. And we should be considering these things and we should present a different viewpoint to people. We can do it in a nice way. Hey, have you considered this side of things? Do you, do you really think the kindergarten kids should be sitting there in front of, in front of a bunch of fat made up guys that look like ugly women and make fun of females? Do you think that's a good idea for your child at four, five, six years old? Just maybe, maybe there's something better. Maybe they should learn to read and write and maybe go to the zoo. Yeah, I think it's easy, Alvin, <clears throat> and I'm glad uh, you define them as self-persecuting Christians because uh, it's like all of a sudden, you know, they wake up, you know, like 30, 40 years later. And it's like, wow, man, you know, the Marxists are running the joint. You know, we've got some freaking uh, <laughs> six foot, four inch, 270 pound dude walking around in, you know, size 14 stilettos uh, in Borat's thong. And we're all aghast. Like, how did this happen? Well, this happened on your watch, not you, Albin, but the indolence watch, the lazy watch, uh, the people that believe, you know, that uh, that they're just to be a silent witness and they're not to get into these dicey, you know, phrase that's fraught with public, you know, and political discourse and that our Christianity is to be kept in this, you know, this <laughs> idyllic little Christian ghetto, a, a Christian Disneyland of, 
you know, earthly delights. And next thing you know, that we've got a full-on hailstorm. And the Christian has got the balls or the daftness to say, you know, whence cometh this thing? Well, it came on you because you slept in the light, you know, for the last 20 or 30 years. And, and, and do you... Do you think the people on the left and do you think the people who are into the satanic stuff, do you think they say like, well, you know what? I don't permeate my belief in this evil stuff. I don't <laughs> use it every day. I don't use it in politics, for example. You know, politics, right. this is funny. I have this in my book, Obvious. Politics is a Greek word that means affairs of the city. Now, that weren't we told to go into all the world and preach the good news? Yeah, disciple nations. Yeah, Hello. exactly. Right. And, and we might be the only nation on earth that doesn't have a border. There's like 190 plus nations out there. And somehow we're supposed to have open borders and we're supposed to take care of the poor of the world. We could take care of the poor of the world in their country. We don't have to leave them in here. We have poor in this country. We have poor that need to be taken care of. And we're overwhelmed with our poor. We could be nice and we could be gentle and we could be loving but we gotta we gotta be focused on on the fact that there are nations and nations have borders and we as a nation should have them too. Yeah, I'm sitting two hours north, brother, and I, I was down in uh, Pearsall County or Pearsall, Texas. I think that's Frio County deer hunting um, in December. And um, so Pearsall, uh, Albin. And our guest is Alvin Sadarn. He's the author of the book, Obvious Seeing the Evil That's in Plain Sight and Doing Something About It. Damn it. And you can find that over at Amazon. <laughs> so so, so uh, Pearsall's like, I'm like 40 clicks from Eagle Pass. Oh. And, um, and so the, the ranch that I'm hunting on, privately owned, it's been in the family for, I think, 100 years, something like that. And um, he said that they went from a sleepy, you know, Big deer hunting capital, good boot scooting boogie cowboy Texas town to a place. So he said his sheriff basically was like Andy Griffith. Him and Barney, you know, Barney had the bullet and he didn't carry a gun. Right. He said it was just a sleepy town, man. And then all of a sudden Biden gets in office. And it's like, oh, the orange man's bad. You know what's bad is a half dead carrier pigeon for uh, Mar Marxist ideals who's controlled by Obama and Susan Rice and and uh, the World Economic Forum, uh, that's what's bad. He said that they went from maybe a couple of uh, illegal alien apprehensions a month to 10 to 15 carloads a night that they're chasing down. And uh, full-on bedlam. And listen, man, when, when I was driving on I-35, get south of San Antonio, about 20 miles, trash everywhere, trash on the side of the road, trashy houses. It was third world. And yep. that happened, that happened, what, 30 months? Just poof, yep. you know? And then the Christian, you know, yep. uh, Alvin, how many, so you're around church a lot. You're, you, you, you write for stream, American thinker. Uh, yep. You're around a lot of, you know, big, powerful Christians. Have you ever heard a big, powerful pastor uh, or church do a sermon on how, uh, coming into somebody's country illegally is a sin. Yeah, no, I, I have not heard that. Now, I go to uh, Jonathan Kahn's church out in Wayne, New Jersey. He's got the book uh, uh, Return of the Gods. He just recently spoke at the Gathering National Prayer Breakfast in Washington, D.C., and he had some powerful stuff. you got to go online and look for it. Gathering uh, National Prayer Breakfast, Washington, D.C., uh, Jonathan Kahn, he's got it's amazing, but he's talking about what 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 we did as a country. We let the door open to all these different evil elements, and and you know somebody might say, well, some of these people seem possessed, and I got to say it this way: it's like when the serpent first tempted Eve, he didn't he didn't uh, uh, possess her; he just gave her two options. He said, "Did God really say not to eat from this tree? Don't you think it'd be a good idea to be smart and and powerful? And what do you think? These are the two options: obey God or be smart on your own." And that's what's happened here. We've got people coming in with all these crazy ideas and they're saying like, look, God has a way and it's a good way and you can have a lovely family and a, a life and you might not be rich, you might not be famous, but you might not have drug problems either. You might not have kids going off the rail 
or you can have drugs. You can have, you know, we, we can have uh, trafficking, uh, human people being trafficked through the South border. We can have drugs coming in. We can have cartels and gangs coming in. What do you think? Or can we maybe close off the border and, and, and have a real country and take care of people that are here and then extend that generosity out to other countries like we did about, you know, 15 years ago when people weren't even thinking like, oh, yeah, boys can can dress up as girls and swim on swim teams and run track and break all these records and we'll go rah, rah, rah. I mean, come on, folks. That's why in the book, obvious, I just say stuff that was obvious. 10, 15 years ago, the stuff in this book, people would say like, why'd this guy write a book like that? What, what's he talking about? But it, but it's here now. And even back then, when I saw it creeping in, I, I took steps to say something back then. I didn't know it would get this bad. But when the church goes to sleep and decides, it's, yeah. I'm going to wake up whenever it's all over, whenever somebody else fights the fight. And then I'll say like, I'm here to preach the gospel, folks. You know what? There's, there's good news that, uh, you could preach it right now by taking a stand against evil. You could do that right now. That's a way of preaching the gospel. Yeah, amen. One of the reasons I think a lot of a, a lot of Christians, you know, rest on their uh, laurels album, <clears throat> and uh, this this is uh, one of my pet peeves. It's a bee in my bonnet. Um, I think they think, you know, well, it's the end of the world, man. It doesn't matter what we do, Alvin and Doug. You know why polish brass on a sinking ship? And I'm like, who said the ship is sinking? And everybody's like, well, I know you wrote an article about it. I haven't gotten into it yet. But yeah. a, a lot of people say, you know, it's like, well, you know, Alvin, it's never been this bad. It's like, what? It's never been this bad. Really? I yeah. thought the 20th century is kind of jacked up. Can you imagine, Alvin, if, yeah. if you were born in 1900, okay, and you croaked 1985, you saw some stuff. You saw 120 million people get murdered in two war wars, the Korean War, uh, Khmer Rouge, Pol Pot's purges, Chairman Mao. You saw hippie revolution, drugs mainstreamed, you know, by John Lennon and Paul McCartney and the rest of the Beatles. You saw the sexual revolution and the Marxist revolution. You saw a lot of stuff. And uh, you saw you saw Spanish flu. You saw you saw crippling polio, you know, go through our nation. You saw stuff. And guess what? Jesus didn't come back. And a lot of Christians thinking, you know, I'm just waiting on rapture, man. When Jesus comes again, he's going to be pissed off. He's going to sort things out, man. Guarantee, guarantee. And you fail to fight evil because of uh, 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 I think it's a very uh, wanting eschatology. I'm post mill. I believe Christ uh, triumphs through the church before his second coming. And uh, and I believe the meek, not the Muslims or the Marxists, inherit the earth. And that's meek before God, not men. And uh, I see, like when I go through, you know, my research for Psalms of War, every time the, the unrighteous tried to do something to the righteous, God put the unrighteous down. He didn't remove the righteous from the planet. Yeah. And I my view of the whole Bible uh, album is is God just whoops ass on every evil kingdom and every oppressive leader that tries to oppress the people of God. And I think that extends all the way up until Christ's second coming because the gates of hell are not going to prevail against the church. And everything that looks so scary right now, I'm just like, folks, you've got authority. You've got power in prayer, in, in numbers with people who have faith. You're supposed to speak to these mountains and mountains are not just, you know, Lord, get, help me get rid of COVID. It's like, Lord, help us get rid of this, uh, this Marxist puppet. Help us get rid of George Soros. Help us get rid of, you know, that's, that's what drives me nuts. It's like, well, it's, this is how it's supposed to be, Alvin and Doug, it's supposed to go to hell. And then Jesus comes swooping in on a cloud, surfing in like, you know, Tony Hawk. And then he rescues us poor little ragged, beat up little Christians. Like, I don't believe that whatsoever. Yeah, I, yeah I, got, I, I want to address two, both of your points there. The one is, and I have an article at AmericanThinker.com called uh, What the Story of the Boy Who Cried Wolf 
can tell us about the end times. Now, a friend of mine, a very good Christian guy, Christian friend says, I'm tired of these, uh, you know, these prophets, uh, so-called prophets saying like the end times are here because again, like you pointed out, a lot of bad times. Let's just go back to the Nazis taking over the world basically and killing all the Jews. Back then, sure, it's the end times, folks, and it didn't happen. The one thing I wanted to point out to him, though, is that in The Boy That Cried Wolf, to me, the real point of the story was that one day the wolf did come and the boy cried wolf and nobody believed them because of all these, you know, as it were, false prophets. But what's good is that there are some people saying maybe they're here, but there's other pe preachers. And I think more preachers fall into this category that say, you know what, you may live to be a hundred years old and your end times, like my personal end times are coming for me in about 30 years, right? My personal end times. So I could be ready for my end times. Jesus might come right. back before then, but my end times. The second thing, when people say, well, I'm not going to do anything because God is in charge. I believe in predestination. And right now I can see that God's going to handle things, whether I vote for the right guy or not, whether I speak out when evil is in my face, it's up to God. He's in charge. And I have in my book, Obvious, I have a great little story about uh, a guy goes to the doctor and the doctor says, well, you're in bad shape there, buddy. Uh, you got to take these pills or you're going to, you're going to die in a, in a, in a, in a, within a year. And the, the guy says, I'm a Christian doctor. I believe in, in predestination. I'm not going to take the pills because if it's God's will that I, I die, I'll die. If it's God's will that I live, I'll live. And the, and the preacher and says, yeah, well, I'm, I'm a Christian too. And I also believe in predestination. And, and if you take the pills, you're predestined to live. If you don't take the pills, you're predestined to die. And that's yeah. the way it is with this nation. If we do nothing, the nation is predestined to go the way of other nations right. after 250 years. But if we take a stand like we should and be bold, bold men and women of, of, of faith, we can see that we're predestined to live. So why don't we get involved in the battle? Remembering yeah. the battle belongs to the Lord, of course, but he gives us so many opportunities, especially today, especially today. They're in our face all the time. We just have to say, no way, baby. Yeah, and again, it doesn't take much. And I think, you know, the scriptures replete. I mean, here, here, here you got this, you got this, uh, the George Soros album of, uh, album of, uh, Egypt, you got Pharaoh, handsome, good-looking Yul Brenner cat, you know, that's oppressing the people of God. Yeah. And God's like, crap, how am I going to fix this? It's like, hmm, I, I know. I'll get a, I'll get a washed-up 80-year-old dude who's running, from the, <laughs> who's running from the law, who's got a crappy job, works for his father-in-law, tending sheep, <clears throat> and then I'll get him to give the law and liberate the children of Israel and then in regards to how do I match Pharaoh's fighting force? Well, I just tell them to stand still and watch uh, God open up a big can of whoop ass on Pharaoh and his host. And you see it over and over and over again. It doesn't, it, you know, it's like, you want to make the walls of Jericho fall down? Okay, we're going to get some Bradley tanks in here. We're going to smash up these, you know, these barriers. It's like, no, walk around it, blow a trumpet and shout. And so the, the odds can look like they're tremendously, you know, this stacked against the Christian. And it looks like now it's like, ooh, you know, it's like we've got the big bad boogeyman. We've got the big bad God that's yeah. behind us. And I don't know why Christians get so fearful. Man, I've been, Alvin, I've been in meetings where, where the Christians, it's like, it's like Satan is, is, Bigger, badder, bolder than Jesus. The Antichrist is on the horizon. And I'm just like, the devil's a created being. Yeah. He's, he's, dogs, he's God's dog on a chain. <laughs> he's been defeated in uh, death, burial, and resurrection. Yeah. Hey, scared Christian, there's one third of the angels and there's two thirds with us. And they're called the angelic armies. And when people got a glimpse of them, when they saw it behind the veil, they dropped like dead men. And they encamp around those who fear God. And I, I'm just trying to blow hope into people's spirit nowadays because it's like, oh, you know, the, the election's going to get stolen again. It's like, well, how about let's pray an imprecatory prayer that it doesn't occur. How about we pray that God some kind of supernaturally, you know, blows up all these, you know, uh, specious uh, charges against Trump like he's already doing. He's, yeah. 
<laughs> it's already happening. That's the thing that I think, you know, that's what I dig about you. It's what I dig about Metaxas and some other guys. Instead of just, you know, getting, you know, some ivory black paint and just painting everything dour and grim and doomy. It's like if you, and, and it just takes just one or two people that gets the moxie, the cojones, the tomatoes, huevos, whatever you want to call it, to where they start speaking out what God says, speaking the truth, because that's just powerful. And they yeah. put angels in motion, the people of God in motion. Then they can stymie, cudgel off, and smash and break all this garbage uh, that's being foisted upon us. And I think I think the reason. Sorry, Alvin, I'm, I'm yapping. That's I think it's your I think show. The, yeah, I know, but I mean, I I brought you on as a guest, and here I am doing the whole Sean Hannity thing, talking all the time. I think I think the reason, Alvin, why the enemy it looks like it's a full court press. I think it's because they're getting their ass beat. And yeah. that's what happens when you get in a fight. You start really getting desperate and yeah. you start trying to claw eyes and grab a hammer or do something. And I think they're getting desperate because I think there's going to be a major Holy Ghost breakthrough. I think there's, I think, you know, the convoy that we saw come down to Texas, woo, yeah. make you give you goosebumps and stuff. Yeah. What you're seeing going on in, you know, Southern and uh, Western Europe, Sri Lanka, you know, it's yeah. incredible. And I'm not saying it's all godly, but they know that whatever this thing is, that that we didn't ask for that's you know that's based in marxism and communism this is bad and so there's something in them that innately knows and i don't know if it's from a catholic or a protestant underpinning that whatever that crap is that they're smoking we don't want it so yeah uh, by the way um if you want to get uplifted as to what's going on i have a kind of a funny little piece at theblaze.com theblaze.com i used to work with the glenn beck's organization many moons ago but i have a new article up there right now called sure the left has taylor swift but we have cat turd yes and if you're wondering what that's all about get in there and, and one thing i like to do every day in my prayer time i like to pray Ar Irving Berlin's prayer, God bless America, land that we love, stand beside her and guide her through this night with your light, Lord, from above. And we have to remember that God, God has the answer. And we have to, and, and in the Our Father, for heaven's sakes, where the, the Lord gave us the most perfect prayer. When we think about it, when we read it, when we don't just read it or say it by rote, but we think about what what Jesus said in that prayer, it's powerful stuff. We've got a God that's a God of the universe above all yeah. this evil. He's yeah, and I like how us. and I, I like how Jesus said, um, "Our Father who art in heaven," and then you just kind of pause right there. Yeah. Uh, God reigns from heaven. Heaven yeah. rules. It's not. It's not the earth rules. It's not Satan rules. It's the heavens rule. And you know, Nebuchadnezzar found that out the hard way. And then he says, thy kingdom come. Think about that, Alvin. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And like, where scared Christian? On earth, on this terra firma, as it is in heaven. Yeah. And, that, and again, that wasn't some like, well, it might work or it might not. God says, if you speak anything that's according to my will and you do it in faith, boom, I'm going to answer it. I'm going to give it to you. And that's why I'm trying to, you know, just, and, you know, uh, just try to, talk Christians off the ledge of fear. Yeah. It's like, man, understand who God is. Understand yeah. who you are in Christ. Take, God, the, take it, that yapper and put it against the enemy. Re, you know, remember, his word. remember 2 Timothy 1, 7. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of sound mind. That means we're thinkers. We think, okay? We don't like, ah, ha, ha. And, and this is this is, that verse alone should encourage you whenever something comes up that gets you to shake in your booties. That verse alone, 2 Timothy 1, 7. So before uh, we let you off, Alvin, do um, you think they're going to come around as 2024 approaches? And I know you're devoting your whole life to seeing uh, uh, Biden derailed and, and um, uh, Kamala not get the ticket or Michael uh obama get into that <laughs> that resolute desk for a bill boinked monica album but um uh so do you th do you think there's going to come another covid 1984 disease x what should any exhortation to the christian should well, they get another heap and helping dose of fear 
served up to them uh, coming into uh, this uh, general election? Well, you should you should know the enemy. Don't be afraid of the enemy, but know the enemy. And the enemy has this big, giant bag of tricks. And and like you said, Doug, the more frightened they get, the more frightened they get, the more desperate, the more like they're going to go flail, flailing. And uh, But just be ready for it, folks. And take your, do it now. Get ready now. Don't wait till the enemy is at your doorstep. Be ready. Pray up and get ready. Alvin Sadar is our guest. He's the author of the great book, best-selling book over there at Amazon.com. Obviously, in the evil that's in plain sight. And doing something about it, go over there and click your mouse, melt your plastic, and uh, buy at least five copies to pass out to your buddies. Again, it's a great primer on how to take it to the enemy. Uh, multiple different topics touched on. And guess what? This is one of my favorite, favorite things. It's a two to three minute read per chapter. Boom. I'm a simple man. Hey, Alvin, thanks for being on uh, Warriors and Wild Men, big dog. Love it. Always love being on with you, Doug. Stay rowdy, buddy. Mm -hmm.